Hey folks, hope everybody's doing well. Mark back here with a vinyl update, most likely my final one for 2016. Getting ready to head into the holiday season. Going to be heading to Dallas at the end of the week, my hometown. Going to see family and friends there and then come back for New Year's Eve. Head over to Buffalo, New York for something a little different to do there for the New Year's Eve weekend. So I'm sure I'll be buying vinyl along the way. I say Buffalo now, that's provided I don't get snowed out of there. You know, you never know what'll happen between now and New Year's Eve, but come what may. In any event, I'm sure I'll be buying some new vinyl on my excursions to show you in a new video in 2017. So time to finish up all the stuff I've picked up over the last couple months in 2016, including things I've picked up in Chicago, that are a place I went to about a month ago, and then also various places around town, th you know, thrift stores, flea markets, um, record stores and even online picked up a few things so listen to everything ripped everything to mp3 that's what i typically do so i can listen to it on the go on my phone and in the car and uh now it's all ready to be filed away so i think i'm gonna gonna show this all to you before i before i get going on that so let's get started swell maps and this is an album called a trip to marineville this came out on uh rough trade originally and this is a reissue on mute and it actually comes with a free 7-inch single. So it's kind of cool. Post-punk is how they've been described typically. Um, not the easiest listen. I mean, it's not incredibly melodic. But give it a few listens. It'll start sinking in a little bit. Um, they have another one called Jane from Occupied Europe that I, that I plan to pick up. Swell Maps. Here's a music compilation I found for a buck. This is one from 2011 featuring songs by... Um, the Liars, an edit by Can, also Moby's on here, and McHarvey from Birthday Party, along with some other people I hadn't heard of. And I uh, love the Mute label, so this was a great chance to kind of catch up on some things they've done over the last few years, things they've released. Here's a duo called Placebo in an album they did called England's Trance in 1983, I believe. No year on here, but I'm pretty sure it's 1983. Um, kind of a synthesized, uh, I don't know, um, guitars and synthesizers, kind of a new wave sound. These are their haircuts. <laughs> they, they sound a lot like they look. And again, of course, nothing to do with the 90s group Placebo, whom I like a lot. Um, this is a different group altogether. Here's an, uh, an EP by a group called Horse Latitudes. And the EP is called What is More Than Life? Jangly guitar group. Signed to Cherry Red in 1990. And they did this, this album here. Or EP, actually. Here is a woman named Jenya Raven. Jenya Raven, not quite sure how to pronounce her name. It's an album called Urban Desire from 1978. And she originally was the um, manager for the Dead Boys. Uh, late 70s punk band, the Dead Boys. And she went off and did some albums on her own. Kind of boogie-woogie, bluesy rock Kind of like a bar band, I don't know, with some saxophone in it. Uh, enjoyable stuff. Quite like it. And here's one from Johnny Thunders. Johnny Thunders, an album called So Alone from 1978. He originally, for those who don't know, he was originally in New York Dolls, their guitarist. Then he formed the proto-punk band The Heartbreakers. And then went on his own and did this album called So Alone. And um, it was produced by Steve Lillywhite. Features Peter Parrott from The Only Ones, Steve Jones on guitar from The Pistols, even Chrissy Hind sings uh, backup on a track on here. So good stuff here. I've been after this album for a long time. This is a reissue on the Drastic Plastic label. They did a great job on it, too. Speaking of reissues, this is one of an obscure duo. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's an English duo uh, of guys dressed as women, obviously, here, called Dufy. Take a look at that spelling. Dufy, I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm not totally sure. The album's called Silence and Wisdom. It came out in 82. They followed it up with another album called Double Happiness a few years later. And the wonderful Dark Entries reissue label has taken both albums and issued them as a gatefold double. And uh, there's a whole story made up behind them. And uh, it basically relates to them being a couple of schoolgirls whose parents died and they found solace in each other and, and making music. This, this incredibly emotional music. And then it goes on to get even more convoluted. You'll have to read for yourself the rest of it. 
the the music is mostly instrumental and goes anywhere from um, pastoral guitar music a la de Rudy Collum to more electronic excursions of Brian Eno. So interesting stuff if you're into that kind of thing. Do fee. Love the cover too. Really, oh, very intriguing. Fantastic group called Operation S. They're a French kind of punkish group with a lot of synthesizer in their sound. Um, I don't know really who, how else to describe them. They do a cover of X-Ray Specs the day the world turned day glow. A couple of people I was staying with in Chicago when I was there put this record on and it took like two songs and I'm like sold on it. Complete ear candy. Very melodic. Maybe like early Stranglers might be a good sort of reference point. But I uh, went over to Brick a Brack Records in Chicago, fantastic little record store there, and they had a copy, so I picked it up. French group, Operation S. They got this album recently, um, well, a couple months back, Exmal Deutschland Toxin. This is an album they released in the mid-1980s on 4AD. This is a U.S. edition on Rough Trade, and it was hooked up. I was given the hookup on this album by fellow VC member, vinyl community member, Christian Pena Fuerte. I hope I didn't butcher that too bad. Anyway, he's a fantastic guy who shows a lot of great records, a lot of 80s stuff, goth type stuff. And um, I had mentioned how I was looking for this album and he hooked me up with it. He said, oh, I have an extra copy. So thank you very much, Christian. Much appreciated. This has uh, been given a lot of love over the last couple months. Zap, been showing a lot of Zap lately. And this is uh, their fourth album called The New Zap For You. Fantastic party record. If you're into George Clinton and you're into Prince, check out Zap. Fantastic stuff. This is from 1985. Steve Hillage. This guy used to be the guitarist in Gong in their mid-1970s, um, early 1970s. Prog band. He struck out on his own solo, did a lot of production work in the late 70s and early 80s. This is an album he did in 79 called Open. Unfortunately, you can see the die cut um, got a little bit ripped here. Um, there used to be a line here between the E and the N. It's no longer there. Here's a glimpse of what it would have looked like. Um, atmospheric guitars with a little bit of uh, keyboards kind of thrown in there. Good stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. If you're a fan of Mike Oldfield, you might like him a lot. Speaking of Mike Oldfield, here's a 12-inch I picked up of his called Tricks of the Light. I always pick up a Mike Oldfield record if I don't have it and didn't have this one. 12 inch from 1984 with a rather fetching b-side called afghan nice instrumental there here's one from wolfgang press fantastic 4 ad band from the mid 1980s early 1990s great kind of post-punk band who kind of morphed into kind of more of a funk act this catches them right in the middle of that transition this comes from their 1988 album birdwood cage a song called kansas and this is the 12 inch of it never had it Found a copy for a relatively good price, so I picked it up. And if you're not familiar with the Wolfgang Press, check out Kansas on YouTube. It's a great example of their sound. Um, this is a U.S. edition on Rough Trade. Wolfgang Press. Band out of the U.K., Manchester, called Paris Angels. And this is a 12-inch they released called Scope. I have the 7-inch of it, but found the 12-inch relatively cheap. It was extended, had some extra material on it. Picked it up. If you're a fan of um, New Order... Um, Stone Roses, Happy Mondays, all that whole Manchester sound, even the Charlatans, you might be a fan of uh, Paris Angels. I like them a lot. They did one album and a series of 12-inch singles before splitting. Here's a mysterious act I don't know much about called the Lemignanas featuring Peter Hook. Yes, Peter Hook from Joy Division New Order. It's on this record. This came out in 2016 and it's kind of a dance um, I don't know, kind of a dance alternative rock kind of sound. I hate to sound generic on it, but I don't really know how else to describe it. But what really sold me on it was the fact that it was remixed by Andrew Weatherall, the man who took Primal Scream out of Indie Land and into the dance floors with Loaded back in 1990 and the whole Screamadelica era. Andrew Weatherall's fantastic remixer. He also has done a fantastic mix of Soon by My Ability Valentine. And he records under the Two Lone Swordsman and also Sabres of Paradise. So check out Andrew Weatherall and keep your eye out for the Lemignanas. See what else they come up with. And they are a French duo, turns out. 
Billy Ray Martin, she used to be the singer in an electronic act called Electribe 101, kind of a dance act from the early 1990s. And this is a 12-inch she released on her own called Running Around Town, Billy Ray Martin. Fantastic female singer with a great voice and a series of great 12-inch singles in the mid-1990s. Stockholm Monster is a UK act out of Manchester, I believe Manchester. They recorded for Factory mainly, and this came out on their sister label from Belgium called Factory Benelux. And it's a 12-inch called How Corrupt is Rough Trade. And if you're into New Order and Joy Division or Section 25, they're worth a listen. Stockholm Monsters. I mean, uh, this is a band I've been into for a long, long, long time called Classics Nouveau. I've had their singles forever, and to me, they've always been kind of a singles band. But I've decided to kind of break down and look for their albums and, and pick those up. So I did. I found their first one, which I showed in the last video. Well, here's their second one called La Verite. And their third one is called Secrets. And then this is a 12 inch I never did have by them called Inside Outside, which has an extended mix of the A side and also an extra B side on there as well. I originally had the 45 on this. Um, if you like early Duran Duran, early Spandau Ballet, um, incredibly catchy pop songs, maybe like The Vapors, if you're into The Vapors turning Japanese, check out Classics Nouveau. They were definitely um, associated with the new romantic scene from the early 1980s in the UK. Here's an act called Positive Noise, a Scottish act, and this is called Give Me Passion from 1981, I believe. And this came out on the Static label. This catches them when they were more of a post-punk act with a lot more guitar and bass in their sound. Uh, they would later move in a more dance-oriented direction and get a little slicker in their sound. And I much prefer the earlier stuff. So Give Me Passion from Positive Noise. Band on the same label as them called Static Records. This is a release from 1984 by the electronic duo The Flying Lizards, Dizzy Miss Lizzie, a cover of that. You might recall them doing, uh, having a hit in 1980 with their cover of Money, which was done electronic style. Well, they stuck around through uh, the mid-1980s and did this 12-inch Dizzy Miss Lizzie, equally as fun. Here's one by Luxury. It's called Public Highway. This is the second single released from their debut album called Unanswerable Lust from 1988. I never could find this when it came out, so was uh, glad to finally get a copy of it. It contains a shortened version of the A-side and a couple of B-sides as well, one with a remix. Luxuria was uh, a duo made up of Noko and Howard DeVoto. Howard DeVoto used to be in the Buzzcocks on their first EP, broke off to form Magazine, and then, then when they broke up, he did a solo album in 83 called Jerky Versions of the Dream, then went pretty much AWOL through the 1980s and then reemerged in 88 with uh, an instrumentalist named Noko. As, an, as Luxuria, and they did two albums, An Answer by Lust in 88, and then another one in 1990 called Beast Box. Noko went on in the 1990s to have success with his own dance act called Apollo 440. But um, this is good stuff. If you're into like later Peter Murphy, Peter Murphy Deep Era, or uh, Love and Rockets, check out Luxuria. You might be a big fan of them. Here's one by the Passion Puppets called Like Dust, a fantastic one-hit wonder. The, they uh, did an album called Beyond the Pale in 1984, and this was really the best song from it. So I found an extended 12-inch version of it on Stiff Records, the Passion Puppets, Like Dust. Um, I don't know really how to describe them. New wave dance pop with a lot of guitars. Probably a little bit like Adam and the Ants, maybe. Here's a disco 12-inch by Brainstorm. I have another single by them called We're On Our Way Home that I love a lot. Uh, this is one called Lovin' Is Really My Game. Four to the floor disco from the late 1970s with heavy strings and brass. Brainstorm. Big fan of them. Here's one from Gay Bikers on Acid. <laughs> love their name. It's called All Hung Up. This is a 12-inch they released on Virgin. They were originally signed to the In Tape label, uh, indie label from the UK, and they were associated more with the Grebo movement in the mid-1980s. The NME and Melody Maker Press dubbed uh, bands like Pop Will Eat Itself, Crazy Head, Gay Bikers on Acid, and there's another one I'm forgetting, the Bambi Slam. They kind of threw them all together and called them Grebo because they had kind of a scruffy look, a heavy, underproduced garage sound, very loose, um, but melodic as well. A lot of fun. So this is an uh, a 12-inch they released when they got signed to Virgin Records. And it's called um, 
all hung up. Gay bikers on acid. And here's the 12-inch I got just because I wanted it. <laughs> this is kind of geeky, but I had the 7-inch of this, but I wanted it spread across a 12-inch so it would sound a little more dynamic. And it's Instinction by Spandau Ballet. Fantastic record. This one predates their true era. It came, comes from their second album, Diamond, and was remixed by Trevor Horn. Trevor Horn being the man behind Buggles, Video Killed the Radio Star. He also did A Lexicon of Love by Ace ABC. Uh, Relaxed by Frankie Goes to Hollywood, Seal, uh, those Steel records. Trevor Horn's the man behind a lot of really fantastic produced, fantastically produced records, and this is no exception. He took a kind of a lame album track. I mean, I don't mean to say lame, but it just wasn't a very good album track. It was a little turgid, and he overhauled it into this fantastic production, and uh, Instinction is, is the result, and so... Um, was glad to get a copy of this. This is the song that got me into Spanda Ballet. Here's one from He Said. It's called Hail. It's an album, their first album. It's Graham Lewis, the bass player of Wire, and this is the first of two albums he did. He did another one in 88 called Take Care, and it's very electronic, um, sort of dance-oriented, but also atmospheric, if you're a fan of Wire. Um, and even like Construction Time Again, era Depeche Mode. Check this out. You might be a fan of it. Here's another one I got, much like that Spandau Ballet. This is an album I already own three times over. <laughs> but I got, I got this edition of Chameleon's Script of the Bridge. Good post-punk guitar rock from the early 1980s. If you're a fan of Echo and the Bunnymen or the, or the Sound or the Comset Angels or I don't know how else to describe them, early psychedelic furs, check out the Chameleons. Script of the Bridge is one of my all-time favorite albums. I have the U.S. original which had eight tracks. Then I have the UK original, which had four extra tracks. Then I have the CD, then the CD reissue, the 25th anniversary edition. Well, I love it so much I had to get this new restored and remastered at Abbey Road Studios contains two 180 gram vinyl. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I know I fell for it, but I had to get it. It's, it's, it's one of my favorite albums. There aren't too many albums I would go and buy over and over again, but Script of the Bridge is definitely one of them. A couple more to get to here. Crispy Ambulance, factory band from the early 1980s, a lot like Joy Division, if you're into them. This is an album called The Plateau Phase. Really good stuff, reissued on the Drastic Plastic label, same label that did uh, that Johnny Thunders I showed. And two more, Bang. This is one called Bow to the King, early 70s proto-metal band, a little like Black Sabbath, um, Acid Rock, Check them out. Bang. This is, I uh, showed their first album in the last video. This is their second one. There is a third one out there that, I, that I'd like to pick up as well. And finally, Earthless, kind of a slow, doom, stoner metal group. I saw them last weekend and they blew me away. And this is a live album they did a few years ago called Live at Roadburn. So I picked this up. Fantastic they, band. They do like 20 minute songs that like start off real slow and then build up into psychedelic frenzy. They're just really fantastic. I uh, can't say enough about them if you're into that sort of thing. Anyway, name is Mark Sanford again, signing off. Um, hope you all have a great rest of the year and a great start to 2017, and I'll see you in the new year. Talk to you soon.